perfectly unfarmed patch of garlic mustard. Now we're in the springtime, and so there's young shoots to be had. So we're just going to each plant, finding those young shoots. It's one of the only foods that are justifiably foraged because uh, people see this as such an enemy and such an invasive plant. But uh, what I would suggest is, how about a regenerative harvest? So imagine if you're tending a patch and every time it grows up to these uh, young shoots, you would actually harvest them and therefore it would never go to seed. And so it would just stay a small patch. And you can also harvest the seeds as well. So that wouldn't be a problem. And they're really good, like onion seed. So we're just gonna go through this patch and harvest up the greens. So we're, we're here uh, foraging for garlic mustard, a very wonderful spring green, and it has many phases of harvesting, but now we're after the young shoots. And I was mentioning, uh, it's one of the only justifiably harvested plants because it's known as invasive we're the harvester of this patch and every time it grew to this phase you can just actually harvest it and get all these spring greens and come back cyclically and actually harvest them over and over and then if it did go to seed the seeds are also very edible so you can actually harvest the seeds and work with them as well so it's a really uh, maybe difficult plant to get used to in an environment However, we have a global capitalist food system which we are harvesting from very far away um, and we're shipping things in. So we have to understand the whole conversation of what is invasive when we deal with uh, regenerative agriculture or regenerative harvesting. So in this way, I'm actually stopping the plant from being able to go to seed and I'm also getting a side effect of food. So instead of coming and spraying it with chemicals or something, I'm actually providing uh, several ecological niches at once. You can see on a little patch, we've gotten quite a harvest in a very short time. It's a pretty amazing edible mustard plant, no different than kale, but requires a heck of a lot of work, uh, less work to grow. Actually zero work to grow because it just grows itself and can be harvested as such. So if every township had garlic mustard harvesters who would come and provide this to local market, then would there really be an issue? Um, considering that the only other option is to take away more park lands for either agricultural or even worse, industrial practices to get the food that we eat to our plate. So the big question with understanding plants and their role in our local ecosystem is to also cross compare with well, what are your alternatives? I mean, what are you eating? Where's it come from? You know, what is its environmental impact? What is its ecological function? So, you know, local garlic mustard compared to kale grown in uh, Uruguay or Mexico, you know, with shipping and fossil fuel use and all that kind of damage, you know, how do we just target this plant and say this is bad for the ecosystem and that's good for the ecosystem? You know, so we have a larger conversation uh, that we hopefully can have as farmers and foragers. And that's something that we're uh, trying to get going in a respectful and careful and compassionate way with all sides heard. Because unfortunately, people get very emotional about this topic. So it's kind of a hard conversation to have. But there you go, a whole bunch of wild harvested greens. Enjoy, friends. Check out lots more on returntonature.us and join on the Periscope app for live feeds of foraging on Return to Nature. And my Instagram is also Return to Nature. Many blessings.